It's Richard Moore and we're down here at Chelmsford City with uh, the boss of Betfred, Fred Doan. And we're just talking a bit about uh, betting and how it's changed over the years, Fred. I mean, you were involved in, what was it, 1967 you started out? I started in 67, but I was in the business uh, well before that. In fact, um, uh, when I was 13, 14, my dad was an illegal bookmaker right. in, the, uh, in the good old days. Yeah. And uh, it was made legal in 1961. I, um, I left uh, school at 1959 and uh, I went to be an engineer, which I hated every second of, mm -hmm. and uh, at 15 and a half I, I came into betting. Mm -hmm. And why did I come into betting? Because I really, if I'm truthful with you, because I needed a job. But I enjoyed it so much when I got there and it's become a life. Mm -hmm. it, and it's been a good life and in every way I've enjoyed every second of it. So nearly half a century, well over half a century now. What changes have you seen then over the years? So when it first started, you would you opened the shops, didn't you, in Salford? Was that your first? Yeah. Thing? Well, how's how's it evolved over the years? Um, in the old days, it it was I describe it as a game rather than the business. In, uh, the bookmakers in those days were um, would win it and spend it. Right. They weren't real businessmen as we know them today. I mean, Ladbrokes Hill. To, well, William Hills didn't have shops. William Hill was a, a race course bookmaker. It was a great race course bookmaker. He didn't have a mini. William Hill came into it quite late. Mm -hmm. uh, Ladbrokes, under Cyril Stein, was one of the big movers in the, uh, in the 60s, and he went around mopping up the country of betting shops and putting together, bought all the chains. Mm -hmm. Corals uh, was similar to William Hills, I guess, late into it. But in the early days, it was, um, it was sixpences and shillings and half crowns and five bobs and, and the limits that we applied were ridiculous. Um, there was uh, no televisions in betting shops. There was, uh, you weren't allowed to open on Sunday. You weren't allowed to open on in the evening. With the licensing laws. 6 six thirty finish. Mm. I mean, you couldn't even advertise uh, the word betting shop. It used to be a licensed betting office. Was it all black towel? It was black towel and it, uh, it was a maximum of three inches high. <laughs> three inches high. Yeah. It was all black towel. You couldn't put chairs into a betting shop because the law said punters could not loiter. You had to put your bet on and then get out. But in, in truth, everybody loitered. And um, I remember that we had, we had no such thing as, as, as uh, air conditioning. You know, air conditioning, you might walk the window, you'd walk Just in the Just thick of smoke, was it? It's absolutely thick smoke. It was like a fog, a London fog. And yeah. you'd come home at night time when you close and just smell of cigarettes, yeah. etc. And, uh, but it was good. And I so enjoyed... So how did things change? When did you start to see things really change and become more of a business, as you describe it? Well, th these e events made it change. I mean, uh, I remember George Walker, who eventually bought William Hills, mm -hmm. he said, um, one day you'll have slot machines in your betting shop, what he called them one arm bandits. You'll, you'll be able to open for Sunday. You'll, you'll be able to open for night race. You're able to put televisions on. And I thought this guy's a madman. So he could see where it was going to go. He, 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 he was absolutely spot on with it. What he got wrong completely was his timing. Was it? His timing was awful and it actually ruined him and it was taken back from Brent Walker and went into administration. I think it went into administration, but George Walker lost it. Mm -hmm. But it evolved into a real business and and where is it now? I think we're it's not just a matter of betting, we're in the entertainment business yeah. because and the internet changed everything. Didn't the it, internet really? changed everything. I mean, if you think even 10, 12 years ago, who'd ever heard of a betting exchange? Mm -hmm. Who'd ever heard of internet betting? Mm -hmm. I didn't. And, and if I've got to say something against myself, I got it wrong with internet betting. I never thought it would catch on. Mm -hmm. How wrong can you be? Mm -hmm. um, and we've done a lot of catching up with the, with the internet betting because that is a future growth area, massively. I mean, yeah. I believe that the betting shops have still got 20 to 50 years yeah. life in them, yeah. but not in the form that they're in. Bookmakers have been good at one thing, adapting. Yeah. Because if you don't adapt, you die. Yeah. And your shops, I mean, they've changed as an environment now, haven't they? They really are a place that people can go and enjoy and they have slot machines in there, you have gaming machines as well as your sports betting. I mean, the range of bets, it must amaze you now when you look back, oh, oh, coming well, from a sports betting background. Yeah. Well, if, if you think about it, who'd ever heard of uh, cash out 
Mm. Even in the last two years, nobody's no. ever heard of cash out. You can now. Or Ray cash, Winston. You can you can <laughs> now cash out on on things. Yeah. yeah. But you um, you know the, the offers that customers are getting now, I believe that the best the, uh, the, the British customer gets the best deal in the world. Believe me, because I go to other countries, to Asia and uh, America. Yeah, to America. Yeah. I mean, it's parochial. It's, it's, it's backward. Yeah. It's yeah. completely, and the punters get completely ripped off in mm. those countries mm -hmm. even in France and Australia they mm. don't get value for money no, no. and what customers get in uh, in the UK is this twofold one they've got the pool betting yeah and two they've got the SP betting yeah and it's competition for one another yes, yeah. and you always need competition and that's why the British customer gets the best deal in the world in my opinion they do and with exchanges coming as well is that anything you've ever looked at or are you happy with the areas too, I think it's too late now dear yeah and in fact when you say exchanges I don't think the word is quite right I think it's Betfair, exchange yeah. it's, Betfair, it's, it's exchange. all about Betfair, it? yeah um, I mean bet that whoever have talked about bet that if you talk to a customer about uh, betting exchange, they won't say betting exchange. Well, there's no volume in there, is there? There's no, no volume at all. No, so. so I think it's too late for And spread betting, there's things like that in the sporting uh, yeah. index, people like yeah, that. Yeah, I, all... I don't really think it's the future of spread no, no, betting. No, no. You know, not, not, I mean, there will always be a small market for it, but that's not where the room I don't think the punter understands it very well, do they? I think that's the thing with fixed odds and pool betting, you know what you're going to get, don't you? So. But you know, with, with, with betting and with racing, what you've got to do is keep you've got to keep evolving and changing is if you don't do yeah I said before and diversify do you think that's something you've done well at betfred diversified into different markets and looked at different things yeah i think we have i mean uh, you know that we're the uh, owners of the um, chelmsford race course that's I mean, right here uh, we are today. I, I, and i'm looking at it today and i'm really am proud of what we've done here mm, yeah. um we've we've put two years work into one year yeah um if you look at it, I mean, I've not seen the lights on at night time, but the guys tell me that it, it looks like daylight. It's, it's that, spectacular. It's that yeah. good. And I am very, very proud of it. And, you know, some of the people here live and breathe it. And mm -hmm. I was stopped on the steps and somebody said to me, well done. I said, no, I'm the lazy one. I, all I've done is write the checks out. You people are the ones that have put it together. But you've backed it, haven't you? That's the oh, thing. You've I've, put, I've, your, I've put your money where your mouth is and said, this is, you know, this is important for racing. Yeah. Um, and important for Essex, I suppose, isn't yeah. it? It's well, if, if I think I've got a, half a chance in, uh, in um, investing in the business, I will do. Because, and I, I really do believe in this. And it was sold to me by other people who, and when I say sold, I mean verbally sold to me, you know, have a look at this, Fred. Yeah, yeah. And I've got to say, and on heart, in the beginning, I never, I, I never took it seriously you know. Owning a race course. And the guy Phil Sears kept pushing and pushing and pushing until mm. eventually I started to listen to him. Mm. Look what we've got here now. I am massively proud of this. And so what do you see in the future of bookmaking and betting? How do you see betting going in the future? Is there anything you see as something that's going to take off that we are not really seeing at the moment? Or do you think it's going to be more of the same with the internet and mobile? What? Well, I do think the products, in, in the order of appearance, racing first, yeah. football second, yeah. greyhound third, mm -hmm. numbers betting fourth, um, the rest way, way down, two leagues down. Yeah. Then you, when you come to the, the likes of golf, or boxing, or tennis, we do take good business on it, but a long way down. And I think what we will do, we'll continue to bet on on all products, because you know, if they, if somebody wants to bet on something, you've got to accommodate them. Um, but horse it, racing, football, and greyhound are always going to be up there, aren't they? Yeah, and, and you know, the one thing again that I think the British punter is well, well taken care of is with regulation. Mm -hmm. I think we are so regulated now um, by the Gambling Commission, mm -hmm. and, and so it should be. Mm -hmm. Um, to protect the public. To protect them. Mm -hmm. To protect them. And you know, there's been all this controversy about uh, problem gamblers. Mm. In, in my opinion, it's a bit overblown there. Yeah. Um, there was. There's been several surveys done over the uh, over the years, and it's less than half of half of one percent. Mm. Uh, but what it has done is raise the awareness, hasn't it? And that's the good thing. And, yeah. and the half of one percent is this. Yeah. It's a mixture of lottery, yeah. casino, mm. betting shops. You name it, 
every one of them has got a small percentage exactly, there. Exactly, yeah. And do yeah. we want problem gamblers? Absolutely we don't want no. problem gamblers. Nobody wants that. It's, it's bad for them, it's bad for us, it's bad for the industry. Yeah. And uh, we want it to be, we want people to have a bet and, and I bet go on bet for TV every Saturday morning. Yeah. And I finish off the show by saying to people, bet to your pocket, keep it fun, keep it friendly and everybody's happy. Nobody Just enjoy it. Trouble. Exactly. Yeah. And that's what I say to everybody. Fantastic. Lovely to talk to you again, Fred. Thank, Thank you very much for your Thank time. You. Thank you, appreciate that.